Hi everyone, welcome back. And uh, in this video, we will continue with whatever we have been seeing so far. We are we are actually creating page page layers, <clears throat> and uh, we will uh, you know try to optimize whatever the content that we have created so far. So so we have created a very simple test case. But if you notice already, we are writing uh, this particular piece of line uh, repeatedly. Let's say my my flow is like an Amazon website. We want to interact with at least ten pages. Then this particular piece of statement we would be writing for 10 different uh, pages, right? So for every page, we need to create an object in order to access them, right? Is there any way that we could optimize this? Okay, so let's take the example from the login to application. If I get inside here, uh, instead of just logging in, if this particular method is basically, if this returning, if this returns a new home page, if this returns a new home page, okay. Instead of just wide, if it's returning new home page, uh, let's go to the home page test. And if, if we type a dot here, this basically shows up all the methods in the home page, right? It is almost similar to this. So your left hand side, uh, so your right hand side is equal to your left hand side, right? Same way. Instead of we creating this manually, we asked this particular method to return the new home page, right? So you don't have to create an object for this, right? So this is not needed. And instead, directly what you can do once you log into the application, you can just tell get home page title. This particular thing will return you actual title. Okay. This basically returns you actual title. And if it is lengthy, you can shorten them. Like you can also write like this in different lines. Okay. So now we have removed the new home page, the, the object creation that happened in the test, right? Now this object creation is happening here in the login page itself, right? in the login to application method. But again, we are doing this explicitly, right? Instead, whenever a user clicks on login button, definitely it's going to land it in the home page, right? So we can basically customize this method instead of the wrapper method, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do return new home page, okay? Return and yeah. Now, instead of this, you can basically do return set login. Because if you call this set login, it will go here. It will perform the click operation on the login button, and then it returns you on home page object, so that you can access all the methods in the home page. That is, if you want to access home page title, if you want to click on admin, click get uh, footer text, whatever the methods in the home page, you could access it now, right? Good. And also, if you notice in the login page itself, okay. We have learned about this constructor, right? This, uh, sorry, the, this keyword. Can anybody uh, tell me uh, where he, where we have seen this keyword and what, what it does? This is a refer to current class uh, instance variables. Mm -hmm. Yes. What is? It refers to current class instance, current class constructor, current class instance variables. It's a, it refers to all the current class stuff, right? Right. Good. Now, we have done the page chaining. So, this set login, if somebody is clicking on it, it is, uh, it, you know, indirectly also returning us the object of the new class, the home page class, so that we could chain them. So, we call this as a page chaining okay we are chaining two pages right so we call it as a page chaining but the same way if you notice we are writing this in separate lines instead if i return the current class object let's say return new login page then okay return new login page then instead of separating it here i can put a dot and then can directly call the set password. The same way, if here I create one more object, return new login page here again, 
and this is also let make to return login page now you can chain these methods together okay instead of this you can directly call set login okay so you can call them chain you know you know like a chain right so chain of events right so now i can directly return this so first what it will do it will go and click on this username it will set the values to it and then it returns a, a current class object and then it, you know using that if you have an object current class object what you can do you can access all these methods right that's what we are doing we are accessing the next method this is also returning in the current class uh, object so we can also chain them together at the end set login is basically returning me home page instead of the login page because on clicking on home uh, you know this login button we will be navigating to the home page so we are returning home page instead of login page okay so now we have chained this well right and our test is more readable now again if you have lengthy lines you can separate them like this okay into different lines okay but this is single command okay single command but it is just separated uh, with the help of uh, dots so we call this as a method chaining method chaining okay and also if you notice one thing we are creating object for each time okay if there are 100 methods in the class you will be creating 100 objects just to perform method chaining the method chaining is helpful just for the readability okay uh, it cannot uh, bring you a lot of advantage okay just for readability so i can just tell okay set username set password set login okay that's fine right but you know for that i'm I, I am creating a lot of objects even though java can handle this but there is a better way to do it okay what you can do is uh, basically uh, you know you can just still return this okay return this so which means it, it is going to return you the current class instance which is the login page okay so this if you see somewhere this this is going to return you current class instance. So basically uh, the login page will be returned to you. So you can do the method chaining, right? Any doubts in this so far? I see, at least say no, yes no, or no, no, so that it will be easy for me. Good. Uh, so all we have done is method chaining. If you guys, if you think somewhere, you know, you are not understanding this, that's completely all right, okay? go back to the state where we were before you you start to code exactly the you know we we were writing login page you go to new login page home page you go to new home page right like that okay you are in initial days you are okay to do all that okay maybe at the later point of time once you want to improve at the time you can come and make these changes okay any concept what i teach is not really mandatory if you don't understand that's completely fine just ignore that and move on and continue with other topics okay all these things i have learned over a two to three years of time okay it's not possible for you to learn in two or three months right yes you know i am trying my level best but if you still don't understand you know keep moving ahead okay that's very important you don't have to stuck somewhere good now our test becomes more readable uh, you know with this right good we have done like this and also if you go to the home page or login page uh, what i see is we are uh, clicking on elements we are doing send keys all that this is a very simple php application built using php so there is not mu much uh, waiting things or you know your stuff like that okay in case of angular or react applications your pages might be loaded inter you know internally only specific part of the page will be loaded for example uh, if i click somewhere here only this this alone will get loaded okay so those kind of applications are built using react and angular so in those cases you might actually need to use weights you notice very clearly we haven't used any weights here okay we haven't used any weights before clicking or doing all that okay because it's a very simple application and it doesn't have any uh, ajax calls and all that so in in real time application it won't be like this okay so what you have to do you have to wait before you do some operation okay again we are repeatedly doing send keys click and all that right because across the application we will be doing this so what i'm going to do i'm going to create a reusable method <coughs> so that we can call it and then use it okay first let's uh, no i i cannot create the reusable method here I have to create it in the com.env, uh, the src main java folder. 
let's go and create a package called as uh, utils okay and i'm going to name it as let's say selenium utils or you can drill selenium actions whatever you feel more comfortable in my case i'm just drilling selenium utils or actions whatever right so we have created a class called a selenium utils now now <coughs> i want to create a wrapper for the click method which we have <coughs> already done during um you know uh, while we learned about uh, the selenium and all that we have created wrapper methods we are going to create something similar to that now so public static void i am going to create a method called as click okay if somebody is passing me a byte type of element okay all i am going to do is basically click on it right so driver <coughs> whatever the byte that comes i'm going to do click right but before this we want to wait for the element right so what we can do we can just tell uh, web driver so we are going to use explicit wait wait equal to new web, web driver wait and then what we are doing here is driver manager you need to pass driver manager dot get driver comma 10 10 seconds of wait again we already have something called as wait uh, which is declared in the properties file right so if i press double shift i will get config dot properties if you go here we have something already defined here okay so we, we will not hard code here also we will use that so if you want to get something from the configuration file you need to use config factory config factory right dot time out good okay this all good so <coughs> what will happen so we are creating an explicit uh, wait object and now wait dot until so i want to wait until the expected conditions dot presence of element located i want to wait for this particular element to get located okay before i try to click on this element okay good the same way i am going to create something for send keys public static void uh, send keys send keys okay and here i can do by i want the element which i need to work with and then i also want to enter the value whatever the value they are sending to me i will enter it in the text box right again i need to reuse this and if you notice we want to do the send keys and what are the value they are passing we are going to send it to this right and now if you notice we are repeatedly using the same lines of code then what we can do you can just press cut alt and enter and then you can extract this as a method right and you can name this as uh, wait until uh, element is present okay so it is asking whether you want to re also replace this yes i want to also replace this so this is the uh, advantage that you get from your id right so it is telling wait until element so this is this i think something that is not really needed so i can rename this uh, again so basically this is is not needed wait until element present right good so now our code looks much clean right so it will automatically uh, wait for the element and then it will click on it and most importantly if you notice one thing this wait until is basically it will wait for the element and it will return you that element okay if i introduce a new variable here it is returning you the element itself okay so what we are actually doing is we are waiting for the element and finding the element again we are finding the element in this class guys who is on who is not muted okay so what we are actually doing is we are first we are finding the element we are waiting for the element to be present okay it waited it find the element it given us the element here it is giving us the element we ignored it and again we are trying to find the element and then again we are doing the send keys which is two different things right so what we can do instead of uh, doing this in two different steps 
I can just return the element that whatever we have found here. Okay. And this is going to return you web element. Okay. Once you waited for the element, it is basically returning you element, right? So you can directly tell. So you don't have to find the element two times. Okay. You're just finding it only once. The same way. Okay. Element dot click. Okay. Again, the only reason why we have created this reference variable is to return it. So you don't need that. So you can basically write it in line. Okay. So yeah, good. You can write like this again. This is also not needed. You can just tell wait until element present dot click. You can also do that, but this is more readable for me. So I leave at this particular state. So wherever you are using this key, click or send keys and all here after what you need to do instead of you doing all this finding yourself. Okay. You just send it to them. Okay. Selenium utils dot send keys and I, I'm going to pass the by type that is text box username. And then I'm going to pass the value that is username. Okay. The same way here also, you can tell selenium utils dot send keys text box password and then password. Right. Good. And instead of clicking, I writing the code, I already have written the code. So selenium utils dot click. Uh, this is button login, right? So button login, right? That's it. So everything will be automatically taken care. Of. I go to the home page. Similarly, so here we are doing click for this uh, admin. So let's go into this. So here, if you notice, we have we can optimize this with Selenium utils dot click, and we can pass link admin. Okay. Okay, again, this is common for all the threads. So I can put a private static final and then I can just rename this to link admin. Okay, good. Now all looks good. Uh, our code also looks good. Let's try to run it once uh, from the testng.xml and then uh, let's check whether this is working. So in the meantime, if you have any doubts, you can ask me now. Yeah. I would like to suppose right now you in the click send case, you are giving just one condition element to be present. But suppose yeah. if you want to verify some other element, uh, some other conditions of expected. So do mm -hmm. I need to go with another like uh, function? Because in the function you are defining web driver weight also. So again, in that case, I need to define one more web driver weight mm -hmm. uh, class in mm -hmm. that function. So in those cases, what you can do is is basically, uh, let's say, I have login page here. So let's say uh, for use, select username and password, it is working. But let's say for login, you want to wait for clickability. Okay. Hmm. So hmm. that's what your question, right? I want to use a different uh, strategy for waiting. Correct. So correct. what you can do is you can create a method. Let's say. Um, you know, I go here. Okay. I'll, I'll create a method here itself so that you can understand. So, uh, you can overload a method. Okay. Let's say I want to click something or, uh, you want, I will overload this particular method. Okay. I'll copy this. Okay. And then if you want a different weight strategy, okay. <clears throat> let's say I want to, um, wait for, let's say I pause mm -hmm. string wait strategy suppose if there is a strategy okay if you want to wait for a different strategy okay mm. you pass it that okay what i will do i will just compare okay if wait strategy uh, e uh, dot equals ignore case okay if it is clickable if it is clickable then what i will do i will call instead of calling this present okay if this is present if you passing present i will call this I got it, got it. Okay. And you can basically do this here and then you can tell the element equal to null. If you want to wait for clickability, then you pass clickable. Then I can write else if my wait strategy uh, dot equals ignore case of clickable. Okay. 
you can write <coughs> one more method let's say this method you can again copy paste it and uh, wait until the element to be clickable whatever okay mm. and then here instead of presence of element located here you can tell clickable element to be clickable and then pass the byte okay and here you can mention element equal to wait until element should be clickable right and whatever the byte you get right and then this is yeah now this is fine right so if you want to wait for a presence of element you pass this additional thing okay presence clickable whatever the additional strategy that you want to pass you can pass it here okay mm, yeah thank you amit good so now uh this is very very simple guys so you we are overloading the method if your requirement is uh, to pass uh, you know different wait strategy okay this presence is not working for me i want to wait for clickability then what you can do you can go to the uh, basically the to the login page login page and then here instead of just telling click you, you can just also pass clickable okay so it will go and basically call this particular thing and it will check okay this is clickable if then this if condition is satisfied then it will come and execute this particular method okay it will go here it will wait for the element to be clickable and return you the element and that element i am going to click on it right okay so this is how you can basically do it right good uh, any other doubts okay uh, if all good then uh, uh, i thought about covering something what else we could cover okay we have covered home page login page okay yeah there is one more thing that i missed to tell okay even though i mentioned okay, hey guys don't use uh, page factory and all that it's not really good it has lot of problems and all that but you you need to know how to use it okay if somebody else is using you need to understand their code okay that's very important correct how could uh, amut and one more thing sorry like yeah. uh, i took the name uh, uh, actually in my framework uh, it is like mandatory we have to go with the factory only okay mm. so, yeah like it because our architect he is not suitable he is not fine with the uh, page object he just like <laughs> we need to follow that yeah yeah page of. factory uh, i will tell you what is the exact problem okay Uh, he can be architect see i have automated at least 50 to 70 applications including my freelancing projects okay i never use page factory okay because that's a lot of problem i'll i'll give you one good example okay uh, let's say we have this home page and this home page we have top menu right mm, yeah so here we have something called as link admin okay now let's say i want to find for pim leave time recruitment my info performance dashboard for all these things i need to create a separate object for example if i if i am not using this if i am not using this I, instead i am trying to use page factory okay page factory is very simple guys you just need to do at the rate and then you need to tell uh, find by that's it and here you can just mention uh, private uh, so you can just tell what is id id equal to this id is basically pim right okay private web element uh pim this is a link right so link underscore pim okay so we need to write like this okay instead of you writing like this you have to write like this first problem is okay here you cannot be dynamic okay we have already learned about how we can use dynamic locator strategy first problem is we cannot use dynamic locators okay dynamic locators is not possible okay and this is going to return you web element okay so you cannot basically use with by 
or if you want to use string as a locator strategy you cannot do that okay this will only return you web element or list of web element okay good and what else the problem again the another problem is whenever you are using this in the constructor okay you have to basically call top menu component and here you need to tell page factory dot init elements and then you need to pass driver manager dot get driver driver comma this okay you need to write this line of code okay only if you write this line of code this object will get initialized okay otherwise it won't get initialized okay so this is additional work okay and this you have to do for all the pages okay if there are 100 pages in 100 pages you need to write these three lines of code okay <coughs> and then if you are using parameterist constructor then also you need to call this uh, you know this particular default constructor and do the uh, initialization yourself okay then now we need to click it right so let's create an element public void click pim pim you know whatever pim pim you know now when i try to reuse this selenium utils dot so if i notice this click method is only accepting by here okay this is not accepting web element okay if i try to use if you try to pass link pim okay it will throw error hey we need to pass by type why you are passing uh, you know web element type so this is again a problem so what you can we have to do is we need to go to this particular class and we need to create one more method public static void click that accepts web element type okay somebody is passing me web element okay see you cannot apply waiting strategy okay again you need to create a separate waiting stuff for you know your element okay that is again you need to do for now i am not doing it uh, i am just directly doing element dot click okay now it is clicking on it all good so there are three things okay first you need to add at the rate find by second you need to add this particular uh, you know uh, constructor and you need to initialize these elements whatever the elements that is having at the rate find by you need to initialize this okay now if there is 10 menus here if there are 10 menus for all of them you need to create it okay so let's say i want to create for leave so you need to add it and then let's say for leave you have so you have ideas this copy this paste it. and this is link leave right so you have to add like this okay even if there is 50 elements you need to add 50 elements but if you are not using this what is the advantage that you can get you can be dynamic for example instead of hard coding this value like this i'll create one uh, private string okay string string type of let's say uh, menu uh, top menu top sorry top menu okay top menus equal to what i can just simply say is mm, so we have to find something that is really common for example let's say this menu leave view leave module menu underscore pim underscore view pim module so everything is same the only thing that is getting changed is the endpoint the pim underscore view pim module the menu underscore is really common right and if you also notice here everything everywhere wherever you are using this is almost same okay this only the thing that is changing is this one right so maybe let's assume if you, if someone is passing me this okay then it will work out okay uh what i can do is basically uh, i'll copy one of them i'll just keep remove this and then i'll put something like percentage replace symbol percentage okay something like this okay now i create only one method public string uh public let's say void click on menu 
and if someone is passing me uh, what they want to click let's say you know if somebody is telling me what they want to click i'll click on it the only thing what i'm doing to do is i'm going to replace this percentage re replaceable uh, with whatever the values that i want to click so this guy will pass me that okay let's say uh, somebody is passing me uh, this a uh, pim underscore view underscore pim module okay if they are passing me this let's assume okay then i can easily do top menus dot replace i want to replace okay what i want to replace i want to replace this percentage replaceable with this value okay let's assume i'm not, i'm just hard coding here but imagine they are passing it from there okay then this basically returns you a string okay now i can basically do uh, driver man selenium utils dot i want to click on an element by dot id what is the string so this is the string that i want to click copy it give it here that's it it will click on it so if you even have 50 elements okay you don't need this okay you don't need this you don't need this you don't need this you don't need any of these okay you don't need any of these you just need only one string and then you just need to have only one method okay at the dynamically you can replace this particular value with you know the values here okay maybe if you want to click on pim you need to pass pim underscore view pim module if you want to click on leave view module you have to pass this particular thing so this will automatically take care of replacing this particular value with this and then it will click on it right so this is the advantage that you get when you when you don't use find it by find by you have to always use constant values okay you cannot dynamically replace values that is not possible so so that's the reason i don't recommend to use at the rate find by again if someone is using at the rate find by it is not a rocket technology it is basically gives you back web element or a list of web elements okay good uh, any doubts in this so far so these kind of dynamic locator strategy will be really helpful if you are working on a very big sites that is having a lot of menus for example we have seen amazon so if you go to amazon even so if you notice all these menus will have a common uh, thing okay you can dynamically replace with the, with the text or some values and then you can find the element with just only one locator okay you don't have to define 15 locators okay instead we can handle everything with the help of only one value okay that's very powerful good so i have speak, uh, spoken about all these things but you know there is something that i missed to mention that is called a static imports okay i will just take a very simple uh, as static imports demo okay. i have i have to explain something called a static imports okay you need to know what is static imports let's say i have a class called a i have a class called a and this class is basically having method let's say public static method mm, void method a something like this this is not doing anything this is just uh, i am method a okay so how will we call this methods from here can anyone tell i want to call this particular method from this particular class how should i call class name with uh, method name okay so can you tell what is the class name uh, class name is a okay dot okay method a okay so this is how we call it right the same thing you can call uh, without this class name okay how because when you do a static import let's say import static if you mention this and then you you have to mention where this class is located this class is located inside com.tmb.test right so com.tmb.test dot a okay if you mention this dot star okay 
dot method a if you mention this you don't need to mention this okay you can just mention okay the the reason why we need the class name is we need to find where this method a is located if you have a unique class name we can easily find it but what i mentioned hey java i'm going to use uh, a method a from the a class okay and this a class is presented in this package so now java is very clear that it don't have to uh, so that you don't have to give the a class name okay let's say you also have uh, another method there called as b okay let's copy this and let's copy paste it to method b and this is method b okay and now if i want to make a call okay let's try to write just method b okay method b this is not working okay so then what i have to do i have to copy this and you tell hey i'm also want to use method b now this error message is gone good but if you have 100 methods you cannot write 100 import statements so if you want to import all the static methods from the class you just mention star now what happens java automatically understand hey this guy wants to access all the static methods and static variables from this a class okay okay now i can understand okay whenever you are telling method b it can automatically understand that you want to call a method that is present you want to call a static method that is present in a class okay this is really easy right so you don't have to give the method the class name the class name is a here so it is very simple but let's go to the login page or home page and if you notice the selenium utils is a is a class synkeys is a static method correct selenium utils is a class send keys and click are all static methods okay then what i can do uh let's go to the login page and here <coughs> either you type the import statements manually or you press alt and enter in your keyboard it tells add and demand static import that's it so now we understood this guy wants to <coughs> use all the static methods from this package from this particular class okay now you don't have to type everything you just need to mention send keys okay you don't have to mention selenium utils dot send keys the same thing you can go here and uh, so this method we have removed so this is throwing error maybe we can tell click on menu and then we can pass some values here okay and let's go to this method and here we can just tell instead of selenium utils press alt and enter and then add chat add demand static so this will work right and if you want to remove all the unused imports like this press control shift and o in your keyboard and then it will remove all that right good so yeah now we have also understood what is static imports good now i also want to cover two more uh, important things one is uh, faker okay there is some library called as faker okay if you want to generate random names random email address this is normal use case right we need them okay even in automation we need them so if you want to do that just type dependency there is a dependency for that okay just type faker or java hyphen faker okay okay what happened to java faker okay let's java faker maven dependency right so let's go here and let's copy this latest version good so now this is the library that we have added let's do the maven import once it is done see if you want to generate random names okay this will be really hard right so this library will help us okay so we have to create an object for faker class so it is still not imported let's go to the pop.xml so let's resolve this dependencies so now it is telling import the class okay this class is coming from the extra library we added so if you want to generate random name so faker dot uh, let's say uh, 
if you want to generate random address you can just tell address dot let's say i want to generate a random city name okay you can put okay if i try to run this program now it will generate a random city name okay so, so if i run it in a for loop let's say i have for i and then i i iterate till five times and then every time i want to generate a random value okay let's try to run it so if you notice every time it created a new city the same way you can there will be all the other things okay uh, let's say faker dot okay uh app over there book if you want to create a random book and all that you can basically uh see all this here okay so you can use funny names okay dot name okay if you want to generate random funny names you can also use this okay so if you notice san minala idavana high wall whatever some names some random names it will generate okay and then i think superhero names you can also do that so okay i want the super hero hero's name we will come on out this and okay so it is giving you all the super hero's name i don't know where is my name okay so that's how you have you can use all the uh, you know uh, methods that is available from this particular library so whenever you want to generate some random values or random data you can use this faker dependency can create an object for that and then you can use it in your code okay this i have failed to cover uh, while covering the selenium so i just thought we will cover it in 5 minutes any the doubts in this so far okay maybe you can go and ahead and explore uh, this even uh, it will generate uh... numbers also random numbers yes 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 it has random numbers i think it is number dot uh, digit you want to generate a number between uh, 5 to 500 okay you can also do that okay you can also do that okay so it is generating a number from 5 to 500 okay random number between these two okay Uh, so we can use this for uh, creating uh, IEDs, right? In mm, yeah, you can do. Yeah. So I was really in need of something. Yeah, Thank that's you. why this normally happens. This is a normal requirement. Everyone will get it. So if you go to even suppose you want an ID number, you can there is there is something called as directly ID number. Okay. And then I'll come out of these two so that we can see how the ID number looks like. Okay, maybe dot uh, valid SSN. Suppose you want the SS SSN value. If you are in uh, America, you know what is a security serial number, right? So if you want a valid SSN, so you can use this. So that it automatically generates a valid SSN for you. Okay, so this is how a valid SSN looks like. Okay, if you want an invalid SSN, you can just tell invalid SSN. Okay, invalid SSN. So whatever. So there are a lot of options available. So you can basically use that to generate all these values. Okay. Good. So yeah, you can also generate numbers. You can generate a lot of things. Okay. Whatever that's you just go and explore. What and all you can create. Okay. If you want to generate a lot of other things, all that you can do. If you want to generate book names, okay, you can also do that. A lot of options or company names you want to get, date you want to get. Everything is available. Okay. Just go and explore. Want to generate phone numbers? Everything is possible. Okay, that's all. Uh, any other things apart from this? Yeah, one more thing that uh, uh, well, the elements right. We are replacing uh, the string right in that element. Mm -hmm. You covered previously. Yeah. Yeah. So after that, actually, we will I will pass from the test class, right? Yes, we will pass it from the test class. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will maybe we will do that tomorrow. So maybe we will click on some admin. We will pass it from the test class and how it we'll see how it works. Okay. Tomorrow we'll also integrate with the extent reports and then uh, yeah we'll see how we can uh, run this on Docker instead of just running it in local and then we will integrate with Git and then we'll run it from Jenkins. Okay.
Okay, Amortam. Thank okay. you. Thank you, guys. Bye. Even screenshots also will you cover?